Good marketing is about convincing people to spend their money on what you're selling, whether they have the money or not. And unfortunately, a lot of people don't realize that they are being manipulated and that their emotions have hijacked their reason. Most people are very good at logically judging the actions of others. We all laugh at the person who spends years shopping for overpriced nonsense at an Ermi store just to be afforded the privilege of shelling out 30 grand for a Birkin bag and condemning themselves to poverty so they can try to impress people they don't care about and who don't care about them. Yeah, we laugh at them. But if anyone criticizes our unwise purchasing decisions, suddenly the logic gets turned off and our defensiveness comes out. A lot of people will be triggered by this video, but I assure you, I'm not putting it out to personally criticize anybody. I have made every one of these mistakes, so I speak from experience. Although in some places motorcycles fulfill a practical role, in most Western countries they are expensive toys, hobbies to be indulged in by privileged folks. So this video will seek to answer the question, how much should you spend on your motorcycle? Because we have to remember, there's no better way to sell than selling lifestyle. If you can convince someone that their life will be better, that they will be part of an elite group, that people will admire them for owning a product, they will go into debt for years, take out a high interest loan, and forsake their future to run out and buy that product. I've done it, so I know. But the truth is that the fancy brand name product is little different in function than a less expensive product with a less desirable name stamped on it, and you can basically have the same experience without nuking your credit card and shackling yourself to indentured servitude for years. Motorcycling is expensive. Between the gear, the insurance, especially here in Canada, the bike and the accessories, you're going to spend a chunk of change. So how to do it and not end up eventually hating that motorcycle for causing you so much stress and anxiety by bleeding your bank account dry? Stay tuned, because we'll go over some common hacks that will maximize the motorcycling experience you crave while minimizing the damage to your wallet. And if you find this content valuable, please consider supporting this small channel by subscribing, liking the video, and sharing it with friends. Ever walk by a really dingy building with a parking lot full of beat up cars and see a brand new BMW or a blinged out Jeep Wrangler with all the goodies necessary for an around the world overland? I do on a regular basis. And these are the vehicles of residents of these buildings because I see them there every day. Now it's none of my business if the people who own these cars want to spend all their money on them. They are adults and can make their own decisions. But the truth is that spending all of your money on a very expensive vehicle when you don't own your own place and live in a substandard apartment building is financially unwise. And unfortunately, this also applies to motorcycles, because these things have gotten very expensive all of a sudden, especially some of the big cruisers and adventure bikes, and the companies selling them are trying to normalize these prices as if everyone can drop 30 or more thousand bucks on a toy. All of us are at different stages in our lives, and so I want to break down the different groups of riders by financial circumstances and provide some suggestions of the kind of motorcycles that will maximize your riding pleasure and minimize the financial hit you'll take by purchasing them. Because the Harley Davidson Road Glide and BMW R1300GS are not the only game in town if you want into the two-wheeled club, obviously. Now if you're just starting out, you're a student or a fresh out of school and need a motorcycle purely for commuting, you need to spend as little money as possible, which means you'll be looking for a used Japanese motorcycle. Why Japanese? Because statistically they are the most reliable brands, so you'll spend less on fixing them when they break. In fact, they may never break. I've owned many Japanese bikes and have never had a serious mechanical problem with any of them. Additionally, service and maintenance tend to be less expensive. You don't want an expensive bike if you don't have your own garage because it may be stolen or subjected to harsh elements outside. If you're into cruisers, there are a ton of options in the 650 to 800 cc class. Bikes like the old Yamaha V-Star, Suzuki Intruders or Boulevards, Honda Shadows and Kawasaki Vulcans usually hold up well, and relatively used ones can be had for three to four thousand dollars. If you're more sporty minded, you can pick up a used Ninja 300 or maybe even a 400 for a song. If you want more power, there are still plenty of old Suzuki SV650s around, and those things haul. Dual sports generally hold their value better than road motorcycles, but if you're looking for a bike that can get you to work and still ride the trails on the weekend, there should be some Yamaha 250s or 230s on the used market. 
Also, the liquid-cooled Honda CRF250L has been around for long enough that there are quite a few used ones for sale. If you have to have a reliable new bike for commuting and don't much care about speed, the Honda Navi costs less than 2,000 US dollars, while the larger Honda XR150L comes in at under 3,000, is a bit faster than the typical 125, and is surprisingly good off-road. Check out my reviews of those bikes in the top right corner. At this stage in your life, the last thing you want is to saddle yourself with monthly payments for an expensive motorcycle. So save up the cash in full and just purchase a cheap one that will do the job. If I had to do it over again, I'd get a dirt cheap dual sport and do everything on it from commuting to pleasure riding to off-roading to camping. I'd probably look for a lightly used Honda CRF 250L. If you're getting along in your financial journey and starting to make decent money, the last thing you want to do is increase your spending by the same amount you've increased your salary. This is the time to be saving for a down payment on your house, a wedding, or for the baby you're planning to have or may have already. This is not the time to run out and buy a BMW F900 GS and park it in the underground garage of your rented apartment where it will get vandalized or stolen. If you're looking for an adventure bike, you will find lots of used Suzuki V-Strom 650s or Kawasaki KLR 650s. In the cruiser department, you can move up to a larger bike like a used Honda VTX 1300. These are good looking, reliable bikes with tons of power and torque for cruising or even touring two up and will do anything a Harley or Indian will do. They have low maintenance shaft drives and a nice one will cost you four to six thousand bucks. For sporty riding, you can get a used Yamaha MT-07 or MT-09 or their XSR 700 or 900 cousins. You definitely don't want to go for an older Superbike or Supersport 600 here, even if it's cheap. Some of these pre-traction control Superbikes are uninsurable in many jurisdictions these days, and if you do insure them, the insurance could cost more than the bike. Don't ask me how I know. If you want something new, the new Kawasaki Ninja 500 or Z500 look banging and having the same engine as the Eliminator have plenty of power. Next up, you've gotten to a point in your life where you have your own house or condo. The house may have a garage and your condo may have an underground garage with some sort of security. If you don't have a garage in your house, consider picking up a shed to keep your bike out of the elements and under lock and key. You have a mortgage, you may have kids, you're contributing to some sort of a retirement fund, you can afford a more expensive bike. 10, 15, maybe up to 20k depending on your circumstances. These are your mid-sized adventure bikes from a Tenere 700 on a lower end to a KTM 890 Adventure or Husky Norden 901 at the higher end. In cruisers, you're starting with a Rebel 1100 up through the new Indian Scouts and at the high end, some of the least expensive Harley Softtails or Indian Chiefs. Conversely, you may want to go with a used Harley Bagger or 1200 plus CC adventure bike. Something that has low miles but is significantly discounted from its MSRP. The advantage of this kind of bike, especially in the Harley bagger category, is that if you buy them private sale, you won't be dealing with a Harley dealer upcharge and you may get some of the accessories you would have put on your bike anyways already included. If you have to have a new bagger, at a US MSRP of 15,000 bucks, the Kawasaki Vulcan Vaquero 1700 is one of the few baggers that isn't outrageously priced. No, it's not a Harley, but remember what I said about getting manipulated by marketers. You will literally pay twice as much for a new road glide, which essentially does the same thing. If your financial circumstances are fairly modest, you have to decide if you're more interested in playing the big spender because you have to ride what all your buddies ride, or saving 15,000 bucks. See, I told you this video would trigger some people. Check out my review of the Vaquero in the top right corner. Above 18,000 US or maybe 24,000 Canadian dollars, you're getting into the ridiculous category if you're a regular middle class person. I know that the marketers love to make you feel like you need to drop the extra bucks to get the latest and greatest, but you'd better be really passionate about bikes. They better be your main hobby and interest if you're dropping that kind of dough on what is essentially a toy as a person of average or even slightly above average means. Remember that a 20k MSRP on a new bike usually means 25 out the door, not including insurance. Your kids might want to go to college someday. Tread carefully in this territory and be aware that you can get some amazing deals in the used market. 
Above those prices, we get into our big, expensive Harleys, Indians, Ducatis, Triumphs, and BMWs. Bikes for high-end professionals, people who own very successful businesses, or folks who just made a killing in the markets and are only using a small portion of that killing to buy their bike. In cash. These bikes are for people who can afford to walk into a dealership and buy them outright. And after they buy them, still leave a huge portion of their investments intact. But, 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 different spokes. I see regular guys finance themselves big baggers all the time. Yep, you do. But ask yourself if you would go for financial advice to a guy who bought a $30,000 toy he doesn't need for zero down and 7.6% APR for seven years. Regular people have one thing largely in common. Most of them are bad with money. That's why you see guys riding $30,000 bikes shackled to a monthly payment on top of their mortgage, and these same guys couldn't weather an emergency. Recessions happen, people lose their jobs, kids need braces, people have medical emergencies. If you have a $30,000 bike but less than that put away for an emergency, well, I ain't saying, I'm just saying. The marketers know how to hook people and dealerships know how to upsell product. Some companies make more from financing than they do from straight up sales. My views will sound incredibly conservative to someone who hangs out with a bunch of guys all of whom finance crazy expensive bikes on a regular. But that frame of mind stems from marketing that has managed to convince most of us that financing crazy expensive toys is normal. If you wouldn't take financial advice from someone, don't copy their purchasing decisions. Nobody ever went broke being fiscally conservative. So again, if you're getting triggered, ask yourself why. If you were comfortable with your financial decisions, you wouldn't care what some random YouTuber says. Yes, that spanking new Road Glide is nicer than last year's model, but you can buy a three or four or five year old one that some rich guy bought a few years back, barely rode, kept in a heated garage and is now selling for much, much less money to get the new model. And it will do the same thing. It just won't have the sweet new fairing or the iPad display. And that's fine. You'll save 10 to 15 grand. Think of that new bike as the Birkin bag of motorcycles. And speaking of rich guys, if you're one of them, this video ain't for you. Yes, there are people for whom price is not important. They can buy a CVO on a whim, then trade it in for next year's model because they like the new colors better. These people are transacting in cash and these transactions constitute a tiny amount of their net worth. These are the people for whom the CVOs or the 60,000 US dollar Kawasaki Ninja H2R is built. They walk into a Ducati dealership and order one of the 500 numbered Super Legera V4s without asking for the price which isn't listed on the website. If you gotta ask, you can't afford it. I wish I was in that financial circumstance, but I'm not. And the one thing I know is that saddling myself with massive debt in order to buy a shiny new thing now is going to assure that I will never get there. So I'll ride my T7 and WR250F till the wheels fall off them, which might take a while because I spend most of the riding season testing media bikes and frankly not getting out on my own that much. But that's fine. These two bikes do everything I need them to do, I don't have monthly payments, and they'll probably never leave me stranded somewhere. So if you're still here and you made some of the financial mistakes I've talked about, don't feel bad. I made them too. It's easy to get caught up in the hype and let your emotions overrule your reason. And motorcycles are emotional purchases. Riding should be about passion, but finances are about reason, and I like to use that to make my financial decisions. Sometimes it's hard to save up and buy a used motorcycle for cash when you'd rather finance a new one now. But I'll tell you from personal experience that your enjoyment of whatever expensive toy you buy will sour if it causes you financial struggles. Every time you ride it, it will give you low-grade stress knowing that this experience you're enjoying so much is driving you into the poorhouse. You won't hear it from many YouTubers because we're in the business of marketing, but there it is. I like to keep it real on Different Spokes TV. Do with this info what you will, just know that no product, no matter how bling bling, will ever live up to its own hype if it causes you to overextend yourself financially. If money was no concern, I'd probably have a Triumph Tiger 1200 Rally, a Street Glide 117, a Husky 701, and a couple of high-end dirt bikes in my garage. Instead, I have my two Yamahas, and between them, they do everything that my dream list of bikes would do. Life is good. I'm genuinely curious to hear what your dream bikes are and how they compare to what you're riding now. Would having your dream garage really improve the experience of riding that much? Maybe you already have your dream garage, in which case, good for you. Please share your thoughts in the comments below. Ride safe, 
and may the spokes be with you.